Hey, Matt from the A-Team, and I'm gonna show you how to take this and make it into this. Today on Format Film School, we're lighting an interview setup. Let's check it out. So here we are now in the back of the studio. The reason why we're here is because we wanted to add a lot of texture in the background. We have this very long corridor with a ton of our gear to add some nice texture in the background, as if we're shooting this nice industrial interview with, say, a filmmaker. Next, we have our talent, and we position the talent far away enough from the background to add some visual interest and to separate the foreground from the background. For our camera, we have our lens set to an f-stop of 1.6, which will create some nice shallow depth of field. Right now we have Giselle in a medium shot on one third of the frame. We could technically have him on the left side of the frame, um, but there's a lot of empty space on the right side. We could have him centered as well, but it doesn't really look that great with the frame that we have. So to take advantage of the leading lines, we can move the camera so Giselle is on the right side of the frame and the shelves are on the left side of the frame. All the lines in our frame are heading towards Giselle. So currently we just have the house lights on and you can kind of see both on my face and Giselle's face that there's a lot of harsh shadows on the forehead, the nose, maybe under the cheeks and the chin and it's not really that pretty looking. Uh, this might be great for the background, but not for our talent. And especially with interviews, it's really important to shine light onto your talent. So it's time to bring in our own lights and shut these lights off. For our key light, we're utilizing the Nova P300C with the softbox mounted on top. We also have a layer of grid and diffusion, that way we're getting a nice soft light directed just at the talent without any light spilling onto the background. This is a great small profile for this type of situation when you're in a small cramped space like we are. We'd also position the light 45 degrees away from the camera and 45 degrees above our talent. And this is a nice general rule of thumb for your key light. Moving on to our fill light, we're utilizing a 4x4 bounce card. We're taking the light coming from our key light and bouncing light onto the actor's face. And with interviews especially, you really want to make sure you can see the actor's face. This is also a great alternative to using a fixture because now we're only utilizing the key light and not another light fixture. We noticed that the right side of his body was blending in a little too much with the background, so we introduced an edge light to separate him from that background. And for that, we're using the Aperture 120D Mark II with a light domini with a layer of grid and diffusion, similarly to direct our soft light just onto our talent without spilling onto the background. We're also using a softbox as opposed to a Fresnel just to add some production value. This is what's known as a soft edge light as opposed to a hard edge light. A general rule of thumb is to place your edge light on the opposite side of where your key light is placed. Really, you can use any two lights for a nice clean look. This is the bare minimum for a good interview lighting setup. We tried opening up the door just to add a little bit of variety with our setup, but it was just too bright. So what we did instead was utilize a portion of the house lights just to add a little bit of light in the background. This way, we didn't actually have to set up another light fixture. We're just utilizing the location that we have. Lastly, we noticed there's a dark spot on the left side of the frame that also blended in with Giselle's shoulder. So we added an MW to fill in a little bit of the shadows in that corner. So let's check out our interview setup. So in case you don't have those lights, you can still use these principles to achieve a good look. For example, we swapped out the Nova panel for an HR672, then we brought the light in as close as we could and then dimmed down the light to achieve that nice soft light. And then for a bonus, we added a layer of diffusion to take that light down even more and to soften that light. Next, for our fill light, we swapped out the bounce board for a standard five-sided reflector. This is an amazing tool for pretty much any filmmaker out there. For our edge light, we swapped out the 120D with the Mini 20. We made sure to point our light directly at our talent and then layer it with a sheet of diffusion. We also kept the same house lights on to fill in the background. Lastly, we swapped out the MW for an MC for a more budget-friendly alternative. So, let's check it out. All right, so when you're shooting an interview of any kind, there are a couple things to keep in mind. First, create as much background depth as possible. This can be done using a combination of physical depth, shallow depth of field, or lighting separation. 
Second, place your backlight directly opposite your key light. This will give you a nice clean look right off the bat that you can add or modify to suit your video later. And third, use soft light. Soft light over hard light looks better on your subject and ends up giving a more professional look. Comment question of the week, what's the worst lighting setup you've ever seen? We've all started somewhere. Describe that setup in a comment below for a chance to win an Aperture M9. And while you're there, if you learned something, hit that like button and subscribe for more tutorials. I've been Matt with the A-Team. Thanks for watching Format Film School and happy shooting.